Hello and welcome to another edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kwabna Chenjahini Boati. Now today on the show, I'll be speaking to a gentleman many of you know. Well, he's described by a lot of people as a man who does not mince words. Based on that, he has probably courted a few enemies. But he does have a lot of admirers for that very attitude of his as well. I'll be back shortly to tell you some more about that gentleman who is uh, said to have led the development agenda here at the University of Ghana. Stay with us. My guest for today is former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Aite. Prof, good morning and many thanks for having us. Thank you. It's Thank good you to see much. you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, anytime I see you, uh, a lot of things run through my head. Um, uh, of course, the change agenda at the university, you, you saw a lot of things, you wanted to change things. Um, I think one of them had to do with the Commonwealth Hall and your desire to make it a mixed hall. <laughs> Where from that? No, I think uh, that's a, a bit of misinformation. Okay. Uh, the decision to turn all halls of the university into co-educational or co-ed halls was taken long before I became vice chancellor. Okay. So it wasn't meant for Commonwealth at all. It was meant for all halls. All halls. Became, yeah. As the university became more and more gender sensitive, mm -hmm. the idea that there should be equal representation of women within the university came out very strongly. So the university decided that access to halls of residence should be equally open to both male and female. I know that uh, it was often used <laughs> uh, by people yep, you know, to largely, true. I believe, to incite students of Commonwealth against me. Mm. But I never did. I never was the one that promoted the agenda. At the time, what were some of the key challenges you saw? The, the, the thing that bugged me the most was uh, sanitation in the halls of residence. Mm. Uh, I visited a number of students in their rooms, and I found the conditions very appalling. Uh, the overcrowding, you know, when, where, where we, you had about seven, eight, nine, sometimes ten students in their room. There was no way they could live in sanitary conditions. I suppose that's why you had to go into that agreement with uh, a third party to get, uh, I think, what was it, four hostels for the university? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, the, the uh, decision to build uh, those, those four hostels that you have on the southern flank of the university, yeah. that again began before my... Th that's the same as the deal with the Africa Integras? No, 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 no. That's a different one. Africa Integras came much later. Okay. So we finished those four halls. Uh, they were supported with a facility that the university took from uh, Carl Bank, a consortium of banks led by Carl Bank. Okay. I know you probably may recall that there was a time when Carl Bank sued the university Indeed. for non-payment. Uh, that again was uh, um, something that should never have taken place, largely because the government of Ghana came in and said they will pay that loan. They will pay that loan because the only way we could pay it was to increase rent for students. Mm. And the government didn't want us to do that. So they said they will pay the loan. Um, the car bank frustration came because the government has said it to pay the loan, but never did. Uh, I, I guess it's something that has to be. So there's enough evidence that the government said it will pay that loan. Mm -hmm. um, based on that assurance, uh, we were able to do many other developments on the campus because we didn't have to. Now, how about the deal with the Africa in Tigris? $64 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, there's been a lot of news about that. But maybe let's hear from you. What yeah. really happened? What really transpired? Nothing uh, unusual. Uh, what is unusual about it is the way uh, an agreement that the whole university community accepted as being fantastic today is presented as being extremely bad. That is what is uh, the main difference. Mm -hmm. you know, so the, I tell you about the African Integrity. Africa Integrity uh, was basically an American company that approached the university okay. because they had seen adverts from us mm. that we wanted to do uh, public-private partnerships mm. for the development of infrastructure. Yeah. They came in, we didn't know them. We did due diligence on them. We found that uh, they were in partnership with uh, OPIC. Uh, and OPIC is a U.S. government mm. uh, institution, and therefore the credentials were excellent. Uh, the gist of the agreement 
was that OPIC will spend $64.4 million, putting up five buildings for the University of Ghana. These five buildings will be uh, four academic buildings for the four colleges that we have, yeah. namely humanities, education, uh, basic and applied sciences, and the health sciences. So each college will have uh, an ultra modern facility made up of lecture rooms, offices for staff, laboratories, and so on, eating places for students, and so on, and an additional student's hostel. Now, uh, it was a BOT, so they will build it with their own money. The University of Ghana was not going to incur $1 mm -hmm. uh, debt in the course of the uh, development. They put it up. All we had to do was provide land. So a concession agreement was signed in which we will give them land and then they will put up their buildings. When the buildings are completed in September 2017, we will then enter into an agreement to rent space from that uh, for 25 years. And then in, after 25 years, the buildings will be owned by the university. In the agreement, they simply build it and operate it. So it means the furnishing is done by them. By them. It means whether, when bulbs uh, are due for change or replacement, they do it. When carpets need to be uh, changed, the air conditioning breaks down, they do it. It's their building. Mm. They maintain it. We are simply tenants in a furnished office. Mm. All we need to do was pay our rent. Now for twenty five years. For twenty five years, yes. And for how much was this rent? So the rent, of course, uh, was uh, calculated to uh, take care of inflation over time and mm -hmm. extra rate depreciation over time. So at an average of our initially, the agreement was for us to be for over thirty years, and the university council observed that uh, our statutes. They don't allow us to lease land for more than 25 years. Mm. So it should be 30, it will be done in uh, 25, uh, years. 25 years. So that means you have of to increase the amount of money to so, pay. So, so the rent then moved from about 5.5 million a year to about 7.7 uh, 7 a year. So that was $7.7 .7 million a year Precisely. for 25 for years. For 25 years. And so of course it was going to go up with, a, uh, with time. On a yearly a, basis. As a result of inflation. There was a margin. Precisely, yeah. What, what was the margin on it? Uh, at about 4.25%. Every year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would mean in 20 years, they would have made about 100% more on that. So you would probably, the university would probably have been paying about $14 million for rent. No, no, no. That's not how to calculate that, it. Uh, the, the escalation factor dependent on inflation. So mm -hmm. you can't say, you can't say over a 25 year period, this will be, if inflation came down, of the exchange rate was such that the uh, city was appreciating. Clearly, what you would pay would be going down. When the presentation was done to the executive committee, one of the things I did was go around the table, mention person by person, call each provost and said, we need 2,000 students, international students. Do you believe that your colleague can contribute its quota to that? They say yes. Four of them, including the current vice chancellor. Well, he says at the time he was not in, but that's somebody else there. So I don't know whether he was pre I don't remember whether he was he himself was present at the meeting or not. But whoever represented the College of Basic and Applied Sciences said yes, we can do it. You know. So uh, at, at this at this point, would mm -hmm. it be safe to speculate that it's just what a mere a smear campaign on you? Uh, I don't want to go that far, say it's a smear campaign. What I know is whoever is doing knows he or she is hurting me. <laughs> he knows that he's destroying my reputation. He knows that he's uh, putting a damper on how people see me, but has taken a decision that I don't care. Well, what's your kind, uh, what's, what's the relationship between you and the kind Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana? I don't think there's a relationship. You don't have a relationship with him? What did you talk about? But you've been the vice chancellor of the same university for so many years. Yes. You have seen a lot. You have I've a lot of experience yes. Yes. to yes. offer. Nobody, no, nobody's interested in my opinion. And I'm happy. Is opinion. it an attempt on your part? Do you think it's an attempt to erase your legacy? Because a lot of people are attributing a lot of these massive infrastructure developments here at the university to you. 
you think it's just an attempt to just wear off that legacy? As, as I said, even as a, I cannot speculate. My, my legacy basically is a, uh, a representation of what I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. It didn't go simply to for the particular buildings. Mm -hmm. I believe that I had some impact on this university in terms of its culture. I, um, I believe that I made some headway in terms of making people think in a business-like manner when it comes to university administration. That you don't run a university as if it's simply some public activity uh, with uh, consequences for nobody in particular. Uh, the oh, way was I was that how the university was being run previously. The university has been run as a as a as a public university basically. My my understanding of public university is that the public university has to earn its way. Until you came in, you're saying not many people saw this as a business entity of sorts. Until I came in, I believe that most people at the university saw everything as business as usual. You came to the university to work, you'd finish your work and you go home. It doesn't matter whether there's a way of uh, uh, appraising what you've done, whether it's good or it's bad. You know, so long as students are graduating and everybody's happy. Many of the things that we were able to achieve were possible because there were young academics, young researchers that believed in those things and so supported me in their departments, supported me in their schools, in their centers by doing excellent things that brought in money and enhanced the reputation of the university. They didn't do it just for me. They did it because the environment made it possible for them to do the things that they were going to, they wanted to do. That's how the change came about. There were many who didn't like that. There were many who were envious of these young men and women. And so we're looking for the party, oh, let the start to go, we'll, we'll bring you back is to the current vice chancellor. Is the current vice chancellor one of such I'm people? Not, I'm not going to mention names. And when you see him, you can ask him whether he was. Will it be safe to assume, or will it be safe to say that the University of Ghana has treated you unfairly after so many years of service to this university and after all you have done in your own small way to make the university bigger, actually bring it to this particular position? Uh, that's a very difficult question. Um, I don't want to ascribe a particular uh, word to what I experienced. When I was about to return, I was looking forward to being able to write my books, do my research, travel around the world, talk about my ideas, share them with people young and old. That's what I do best. I didn't think that I would be spending the first year of my retirement fighting to salvage my reputation. I didn't think I would be forced to answer questions publicly about whether I was corrupt or not. But I am forced to do these things because the University of Ghana has decided, for whatever reason, whatever reason, uh, to assign different uh, or take a different position on decisions that we took collectively. The University of Ghana, in its new management, has decided that uh, all the decisions that, or many of the decisions that we took, uh, need to be uh, relooked. That is extremely unfortunate as far as I'm concerned. I don't enjoy talking about the University of Ghana like this, but I've reached a point where it's my reputation. You know, somebody's destroying you, your reputation, and yet you are held back in terms of uh, how far you can go in explaining yourself. Uh, you don't want to sound negative about the institution that you used to run. People tell me things like, oh, don't take it personal. You are destroying me and say, don't take it personal. How else, how, how else do you take things? Uh, your image is going downhill. And uh, people are being told that, you know, or people are being made to believe that this guy 
had question marks about him. And I'm told by friends and uh, colleagues, don't take it personal. Yes, I try very hard to take it personal. But I also think the reason why I, I do this kind of interview with you, I think it's important that Ghanaians know the truth. Uh, if the truth favors me, fine. Uh, it's important that the truth is known. I have struggled over the past year to get the university community to appreciate exactly what processes we went through to get the project in place. Some of my efforts to inform the community through emails have been uh, made impossible by the university by blocking the email. The email has been blocked? The email to the university community mm. has been blocked. So I've had to find other ways to get my voice heard. It's not fair. Uh, a report was written by a committee uh, that was put together by the Vice Chancellor to look at the African Integrals project. I wrote a rebuttal to the report. The University of Ghana wouldn't allow even academic world to see my, my comments on the report. The Vice Chancellor made a presentation to the academic board based on that report, which was largely false. I wrote comments on it and said, when you are going to distribute this to the board, add my comments to it. I think it's fair. It wasn't done. So I'm forced to use public means to get my voice heard. That's, some, that's not my first choice. My first choice would have been, I come to a meeting of the university, lawyers, this, this, and we talk. If you have issues with me, put them on the table. I have said several times to many stakeholders, appoint independent investigators, bring lawyers, bring finance people, bring architects, bring engineers, let them go through this agreement. Let them ask me questions. Let us go through this, talk to the uh, investors and so on, and then form a properly researched opinion. So you want an independent body to investigate you? Investigate the agreement. Everybody wants to investigate me, fine. Investigate the agreement. If they, if they want to investigate my time as vice chancellor, I have no problem with it. Perhaps Yoko? Yoko. If, some, if they believe something criminal took place, why? Why not? But I would like a discussion. Let's look at if, if you see, saying that I don't like the agreement, it's not the same as there's something wrong with the agreement. It's not the same as there's some criminal took place or something offensive took place. Mm. You don't like it, you would have done it differently. That's a matter, yeah. But whatever we did, we didn't do it alone. That's an important lesson from this one. Whatever we did as my administration, we didn't do it alone. And we didn't do it against some other advice. You see? So when it is presented as a necessity had his way and did it, it is unf extremely unfortunate and false. Given the chance, would you take up this appointment again, the vice chancellor position? Seeing everything you've seen now, seeing how things are playing out in the lab. I don't have any, I, I'm, I'm very proud of my term as vice chancellor. I will not say, oh, if I knew this was going to happen. No, I wouldn't do that. I, would I have done something differently? Maybe one or two things could have been done differently, but I, I don't think there was any policy decisions that we took. Would you have still signed this Africa Integrals deal? You know, what people don't say is that the project was going to add to the university's infrastructure 60% of new academic space. Would you have signed a deal? I would sign it any time. You know, there were aspects of the agreement that I thought could be worded differently. But there was also provision there for renegotiating these things with time. So you're saying... So, so, so I, I was expecting that after I have left, when the buildings are finished, maybe five years from now, another vice chancellor will go and say, you know what, uh, we are struggling. We are struggling with this year. We didn't even meet the student numbers. This can, we, can we talk? So you expect the kind vice chancellor to renegotiate the deal if he finds something wrong with it, or if he feels that it's not in the best interest of the investor as things stand now? If he feels it's not in the best interest of the investor, they are no, there's nothing that stops him from saying, less. and indeed... Can he abrogate the contract? 
a great cost. Why buy a brocade decoration? That's what they're trying. To, or that's what they're trying to do, you know. But of course, the people seeing. So I come and spend sixty-four million dollars in your country, in your university, and then you decide on your own. I'm going to a brocade and then walk away with sixty-four million dollars. Where would you? Where would that happen? So you think so they're, so they're just courting? They're just courting public so, so, sympathy so, so, so that they yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm. So they tell people that it's a bad agreement. It's a bad agreement. It's a bad agreement. And then so you get newspapers pick up. It's a bad agreement. The rest of Ghana has been sold and so on without talking about what benefits they are and without talking about what opportunities they are for ne renegotiating parts of the agreement over time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be now. It can be done in five years, it can be done in 10 years. Look, there are many, many things that we considered. We knew that the world was not static. We knew the world was not static. And therefore, things would change with time. All the, these are all easy. Uh, when people talk as if they can see 25 years into the future and they know exactly how the world of finance is going to behave, it's extremely unfortunate. But that's what we have here. Mm. Prof, many thanks for your time today. And You're we've most really, welcome. Uh, we've really enjoyed our time mm. with you today. Professor Ernest mm. has been our guest on 21 Minutes with KKB, and uh, I'm sure he has shared some pretty uh, deep things today on the show. We'll be back soon with yet another personality you are expecting. My name is Kwabna Chenche Hinebwating. See you soon.